Hey guys, welcome back to more Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Let's play. We're ready for the next mission. Oh, so this is this is a real cinematic part of the game. We're actually going to find out what happens to uh, the president of this uh, this nation here. Setting up the main plot of the game. I could probably be playing this in a higher resolution, you know? I just realized the resolution is kind of low. I don't know if it'll work, though. So believe it or not, you actually play as... Well, you're not playing anything. You pretty much you are the president in this. Oh, you're gonna make me go in this car? This car sucks. Ugh. So I Oh, that was not necessary. That was just you having fun. I was already in the car. Yes, I know you have guns. There's no way that mirror is actually depicting what's behind us. Robert Bowling? I wonder if Robert Bowling ever goes bowling. Imagine if he just hates bowling and he just thinks it's lame as hell. Bro, these guys ain't slowing down. I don't even think this car has brakes. <laughs> Bad shit happening. I mean, uh, just to put it in context, I mean, there's a revolution being staged here. But it's actually connected to the Russian Revolution, which is going on at the same, team, same time. The ultra-nationalists and the... the Arab terrorists are actually working together. The Russians are actually the real bad guys of modern warfare, not the Arabs. That was all misdirection. The main villain of the Modern Warfare trilogy was working with these guys to get the weapons he needed and get all the players in place, but yeah. This all this is all misdirection, which I think is great for the storytelling. Hey, nice spray painting job, asshole. They're even working with an American general, from what I remember. That's that doesn't come into play until part two. I love how part two was like it was clearly a continuation, but it felt like its own game. And then it, you know, like Modern Warfare Two ended on this cliffhanger, and then Modern Warfare Three not only continued from Modern Warfare Two, but it ties this game into it even more. Now this is one revolution that definitely won't be televised. I'll tell you that. Gonna be on YouTube instead. <laughs> and people say nobody plays Call of Duty for the story. That's the only reason I play it, you motherfuckers. And everybody that I know that plays Call of Duty plays it for the story. I know there's loads of people that play the um, the multiplayer, and that's cool. I ain't got no problems with people who play the multiplayer only, but I feel like I'm just pissed about Black Ops 4 not having a single player campaign because it's like. How can you call it Black Ops 4 when it's not a sequel to 1, 2, and 3? I mean, 3 was barely connected to the first two, to be honest. It had, like, some... Men but 3 was also, like, one of the greatest games ever. Like, one of my favorite first-person shooters of all times is Black Ops 3. And then you're gonna make Black Ops 4 into this, like, fucking Fortnite clone? Just fuck right off with that white bitch shit. Nobody cares. I don't know. Maybe Battlefield 5 will be good.
That ain't too fucking ominous. I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, oh, well, end of the line, huh? So these are the two guys that you're meant to believe are the main villains of this story, but you find out later that they're both pawns. He's the Russian. Notice he has one arm. Very important for later. And that's that. I didn't get to play anything, but there you have it. See you guys next time.